One of the most common concerns we hear from growers who want healthy soil is that they're seeing their soil pH getting higher and higher and higher. Good soil pH should be in the mid sixes, 6.4, 6.5, 6 6.6. It's a moving scale. Anywhere in that zone, your phosphorus will be more available, the microbes will be more active, and everything becomes more efficient. Well, in the last few years, while I'm traveling and giving, giving talks in different areas of the country, they'll say our pH used to be in the mid sixes, then it went up to seven, then now it's seven two, seven four, seven eight. We've got pHs of some soils that's over nine. They said, we don't know what to do. The industry says sulfur, sulfate, sulfuric acid. Pound the crap out of it with sulfur. It's a nice reaction to a symptom, but long term, it isn't going to do anything economically and ecologically sound for you or for your soil. What's the fix? Before we get there, let's back up and say, what's pH? What's pH stand for? Potential hydrogen. I'm going to say that again. Everybody talks about pH, but very few people realize that it stands for potential hydrogen. And what I mean by that is as the pH of your soil goes up, the potential increases, but the actual decreases. One way to look at that, if pH stood for potential hair, I'd have a pretty good number. Most guys will say, okay, now we can remember that. So if your soil is over a 7 or a 7.1 pH, you have no hydrogen in your profile. There is no hydrogen on the base saturation of your clay colloid. Dr. Albrecht did some wonderful work on base saturation. You know the numbers that um, you have uh, a clay colloid, and let's say this is the clay particle, and there's a hundred parking spots around here, and he says the base saturation, and very accurately says the base saturation for calcium should be 68 to 70 parking spots of calcium, 12 to 15 parking spots of magnesium, so on and so forth. If there's no hydrogen under the H, your soil has a hydrogen deficiency. This all started quite a few years ago. One of our Canadian uh, sister companies um, and the owner of it, Cindy Moline, called and asked me a question. She says, you know, you've, you've looked and helped us with so many different things over the years to identify what a calcium deficiency or what a nitrogen deficiency or a carbon deficiency. She goes, what does a hydrogen deficiency look like? It's like, wow. Well, guess what? A hydrogen deficiency is a high pH on your soil. There's a very straightforward, natural, inexpensive way to lower the pH of your soil and to let Mother Nature do it for you. If you've tried the sulfuric acid, the sulfur burners, the gypsum, the Tiger 90, all of the different sulfur products, you've reacted to symptoms, you've helped get through the season, but you really haven't fixed anything because sulfur doesn't affect hydrogen as much as carbon does. So when we're looking at hydrogen, hydrogen is the lightest, squirreliest element on the periodic table, and it'll just leave you. Carbon holds four to nine times its weight in hydrogen, i.e. or water. If you don't have enough hydrogen in your soil, you have a high soil pH. If your pH is high, you have a low actual hydrogen, i.e. you're short of carbon. You don't have enough carbon in your carbon to nitrogen ratio in your soil. And if you want to reduce and lower and stabilize the pH of your soil in that mid sixes, the only way you're going to economically and ecologically do it is with Mother Nature. 
And here's what happens. Many times we, uh, as, we're, as we're driving through fields, we'll see that uh, some bicarbonates start showing up in the irrigation water and also showing up in the soil. A bicarbonate is a dirty, rotten son of a gun. It's electrically active and it has a pH of between 8 and 9. And a bicarb, short for bicarbonate, has a chemical formulation. And as I know if you're not a chemist, don't check out right now because this is simple caveman chemistry. The chemical formulation for a bicarb is HCO3. We need to identify and understand what the problem is if we're going to conquer it. So we need to know what it's made of. When you look at the soil, everything works best in the mid-sixes, common knowledge. Well, if you can open up that soil with a little bit of good calcium and get the high-pressure front sinking into that soil at 100 to 150 PSI, air gets in there to respirate the microbes. The high pressure front pushes the air in. The low pressure front is the exhalation of the earth. This is natural soil respiration. If you don't have the right tension or too much tension on your soil, you get no respiration of the soil and you will not ever, ever, ever fix your pH problem because you have to have healthy microbes. What I mean by healthy microbes is you've got to be 100 to 150 PSI on your soil and preferably as deep as you can go so the roots can have air all around them in order for those microbes to breathe. You've got to have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of at least 16 to 1, 20 to 1, 24 to 1, 26 to 1, 30 to 1 would be perfect. The microbes have to have this carbon because they breathe like we do. They breathe in air. This air is 78% nitrogen, 19, 20% uh, oxygen, 415 parts per million of CO2. This is our intake. As we exhale, we exhale what? Carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2 is the essence that's going to change the pH of your soil. Because if you have a pile, a copious amount of microbes eating, breeding, partying, honeymoon, and doing their thing, they're huffing, they're puffing, that CO2 that they're exhaling when mixed with water, H2O, form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is Mother Nature's fix to the bicarb. Carbonic acid forms H2O, CO2, and the chemical formulation for a carbonic acid is H2CO3. If you remember back, bicarb was HCO3. So one stinking molecule of hydrogen can take a bicarbonate and turn it into a carbonic acid, balance your pH as long as your soil can breathe, you have your minerals right, and the carbon to nitrogen is in a correct ratio at a minimum of at least 16 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. To give you an idea how fast your soil can change, in quite a few parts of California in the last three or four or five years, we've been able to change the pH a point to a point and a half in a year. That's the upper limits. Keep in mind, one point or a tenth of a point Let's just say you're in an 8.1 pH. By changing that 8.1 and reducing it to an 8, that's like running a marathon. It's an exponential move. It's logarithmic move. So every tenth of a point is a huge journey, and you want it to be a slow, gradual reduction. So don't expect miracles, but by increasing the respiration of your soil with a good calcium, by feeding the sugar, 
the molasses, the leonardite, the humulite, the coal, the hay, the straw, different carbon sources to feed the microbes so they can make CO2, carbon dioxide, you will naturally lower, naturally reduce, and naturally stabilize the pH of your soil. This is how Mother Nature has been doing it for many, many years, and she'll do it again as long as you give Mother Nature a breath of air and her microbes a little bit of food. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the information we talked about, about lowering your soil pH, please contact us, email, or phone call at SoilWorks. We look forward to talking to you. Thank you.